Welcome back, students, coaches, teachers, and interested individuals in Science Olympiad. Welcome to Mrs. Hulse's YouTube channel. Here I am discussing the Science Olympiad's elastic launch glider, and in this, in this tutorial video, I will be talking about the physics that you should know and be aware of about the elastic launch glider and how it affects your elastic launch glider. Again, I am always open and I'm ready to learn with you guys and gain any additional inquiries, suggestions, or tips. If you email me at holholst at gmail.com, I would appreciate it and I look forward to talking with each of you. Now, here we have the various forces that are being applied to your elastic launch slider. First, you can notice um, going with the flight path, you have thrust. Thrust occurs when your elastic launch glider is released from the launcher. So when it's being propelled into the air, um, that, is, that is its current thrust. Now, it's important to note that it will not have thrust throughout the entire launch, um, unlike airplanes that have continuous thrust and continuous energy being applied to it. Um, the next one that you have is the weight or the gravity that is pulling your elastic launch glider directly down. Um, like we talked about in the previous video, the weight totally up to you. You have anywhere from 10, 4 grams to 10 grams to play with the weight to see how it affects it, to see what you prefer. Um, but just know that gravity and the weight are always going to have an effect on it. The next thing that you can see here is a drag. Now that is working against the thrust along the flight path, um, pulling in a way the, the aircraft or the elastic launch slider backwards. Um, next here you can see that there is, uh, the lift, which is perpendicular to the, the, um, the downward force of the weight. So, this is pulling the glider upwards, um, giving it lift. And we're going to talk about how it gets that lift in the next slide. I mean, is it the wings? We'll find out. Now... First to note, like I kind of got into earlier, um, thrust and drag, weight and lift, this is where we get into Newton's third law. And remember how the NGSS has alignment with all of the Science Olympiad events. So, just a reminder, Newton's third law is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's where we're getting into lift here. So, the air that is deflected downward from the glider's wings produces an upward lifting reaction, which is opposing the downward force of weight or gravity like we talked about. So it acts perpendicular to the flight path through, through the wing center of lift. So the lift occurs when the wing is cutting through the air um, and some of the weight, it can't go through it, so it has to go up or down or around it. So the the wing is cutting through the air and based on the incidence, which we'll get into at the end of this video, that that determines how the air is going to be used f for the wing's benefit, for the elastic launch slider's benefit. And uh, here is our incident slide, guys. So, speaking of incidents, that is the angle between the glider's wing and the elevator. Now, we know that the wing kind of the obvious part, and the elevator is towards the tail, that's the angle between them. So here you can see um, along the longitudinal axis with the with this picture of the um, little jet plane, I suppose, that is a straight line along the elevator, that horizontal uh, stabilizer, and this is assuming that the horizontal stabilizer and the wing is all at the same at the same angle. That is a zero zero when the wings and the elevator are at the same angle. Positive incidence, which is what would be pictured, is when the wing is slightly facing upwards towards the cord line. Um, that angle there. The AOA is the angle of incidence. So when you're creating your glider, 
Um, you can have a zero zero um, or a positive incidence. You don't want to have too much um, of either positive or negative. And you know, I stand corrected. You <laughs> you don't want really any negative incidents. Um, that's going to not allow for any lift. No air, well, hardly any air is going to be able to get under that wing and be used for the glider's benefit. Now, for a zero zero incidence, um, that is usually what's recommended, the zero zero to slightly, slightly positive. You're not going to want um, the positive incidence like, like is what pictured. That's a huge positive incidence. Um, but you're going to want zero, zero to slightly, slightly positive um, to allow air to be trapped under that. Now, the only thing with um, too much of a positive incidence is you'll have too much of drag, which we'll be getting into after lift. So that's what incidence is. And what I read on the AMA Glider website is that is the key, the secret to success for... Um, for your for your elastic launch slider and that's something that you're going to be have to be prepared to change often so um the article mentioned that you need to be prepared to glue re-glue re-glue unglue everything like that you're going to be definitely messing with your incidents here now back to a little bit more about lift there are two actions that happened from the air mass that is being moved as the wings are cutting through the air the positive pressure is lifting the action from the air mass below the wing. Here you can see the high pressure underneath the wing pictured in the red is, um, is underneath the wing. There's a negative pressure lifting action from the lower pressure through the wing allowing um, the glider to, to increase its, its lift. So here these pressures are working together for the benefit of the lift. So absolutely key, you're going to want to get as much lift as possible. However, there are repercussions with the lift. You can already see pictured here um, how the high pressure is cycling into the top part of the wing for the low pressure. Now that right there is drag. It's the force resisting the movement of the glider through the air. Now, total drag, which is what we're usually referring to, is two parts. There's parasite drag, which is a resistance from air to anything moving through it. The glider's aerodynamic wings offer low parasite drag, but total glider increases parasite drag. So, the parasite drag, it's not just about the wings. So you, the wings are great, they're aerodynamic. However, not all parts of the glider are aerodynamic. So, that is creating more parasite drag. So, this is more measurable at high speeds because it increases with the square of the speed. So, um, if the speed of the glider is doubled, then the parasite drag is going to be quadrupled. So, at high speeds, which you are going to be getting high speeds at your launch, it can be upwards of 15 miles per hour. So, you're getting a pretty fast launch. Um, so, that parasite drag can be pretty noticeable during that time. Um... There's also induced drag, which is what we saw pictures, and that's the differences in air pressures that are developing on either side of a wing um, when it's lifting. But when the higher pressure mixes with the lower pressure air, then the lift is launched. However, the wing is continuing to cut through the air, and the energy is continually being expended cr to create different pressures. However, this drag is now now a wasted energy. So it's no longer lift. It's turning into a drag based on the mixing of the two um, uh, air pressures. So let me just go back to that picture. We can see here on the edge, it starts at the edge of the of the wings and eventually it's going to um, the high pressure is going to move throughout all of the top part of the wing where the low pressure was and there's going to be mixing, um, uh, creating drag and that starts at the wing. Now next we're going to be talking about aerodynamics and that's something that you probably remember from the uh, third video that I had previous to this one where we talked about how that's one of the main things that you're going to want to look for is the aerodynamics. Now, this is a direct quote, um, and it is from Wikipedia. However, 
I also did additional research and Wikipedia just, uh, just quoted it very nicely. So I'm going to use their quote and, um, we'll, we'll go from there. So a foil is a solid object like a wing with a shape such that when placing in a moving fluid at a suitable angle of attack, the lift, as we know, which is a force generated perpendicular to the fluid flow. Um, and important note, guys, here, fluid flow, they're, they're referring to air here as a fluid, not real fluid. Anyway, um, it is substantially larger than the drag, the force generated parallel the fluid flow. So here it is. If the fluid is a gas, the foil is called airfoil. So the glider needs a low drag airfoil for success. So with that, there's going to be greater lift than drag. Um, so there are ways that you can try to get a greater lift than drag, at least for um, a higher amount of time. And that's going to be with how you shape the wings. And here's one of the great things that I talked about, guys. Um, you don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You, you're able to buy the kit and there's so much changes that you can make. So here is, um, a cross cut of, of wings here and their different standing techniques. There's a uh, flat bottomed, semi-symmetrical and symmetrical. Now what I use and what's, it seems to be mostly common is the semi-symmetrical, um, of course, my edges were kind of a little sharper, though, um, for for cutting through and creating um, beneficial aerodynamics. And remember, we're trying to we're trying to get as much lift here um, as opposed to drag for this. So, um, a little research on that might lead you to the semi symmetrical shape. But again, this is totally up to you guys and. It also depends um, what kind of what kind of uh, um, room you're in, what the conditions are there, based on um, the the pressures associated. All right, guys, we have one more left, and I can't wait to share with you my uh, trials and errors associated with some of my demonstrations. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, and I look forward to hearing back from you for any tips, tricks, suggestions, or, or just general questions.